Hey people, welcome back. We're in the 1 Peter. We're still in chapter 1 and we were still on verse 3. Now as I was just sitting here reading it again, I noticed what a long sentence this particular verse is. It's, uh, it's two verses long, but it's all one sentence and it all just kind of flows from one thing to another. It's almost like this guy is so excited to tell you everything, he can't even take a breath. And so here we go. This is what he said, and we go back to yesterday. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in his great mercy. Where would we be without the mercy of God? He has given us a new birth yesterday, being born again, we said, into a living hope. He tells you why it's living, because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And here we go now into the next aspect. He says, and not only do we have this hope here on earth, but we have an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in he heaven for you. We have an inheritance. Why do we have inheritances? Because we have a father and we've been born again into the family of God. Now that means that we have this whole parental thing happening over here. It's a beautiful picture of the relationship that God desires with us. When we become born again, as we spoke about, it means we have a heavenly father who we do not fear, somebody who we, we're just so scared of. We don't have a dictator, we don't have a ruler. We have a father. And I guess this is what confused so many of the Jewish people at the time because they could understand God from the context of him being a creator. They could understand him from the context of being a lawmaker. They could understand him from the context of his holiness, don't mess with him. But the concept of him being a father and us being his children, now that was a, too, too much for them to take. They couldn't grasp that we have a heavenly father. And if he is our heavenly father, we are children of God. And therefore, people, logically, we have an inheritance. Every father wants to leave his kids an inheritance. But can you top this inheritance? An inheritance in heaven that nothing can touch. It's safe there. God says, I have your inheritance. There's no tax issues here. There's no economic issues here. I have your inheritance and it is safe with me. Man. No wonder of being a child of God. Not only do we have the living hope that we spoke about yesterday, a hope that is alive within us because of the resurrection of Jesus, but now we are guaranteed the inheritance of children because we're children now as a result of being born again of God himself. Think about that for a moment. If we could live our lives in the light of the life that is still to come, I want to suggest we'd probably live different lives. If we could live this life in the light of eternity, in the light of this inheritance, and if we could do things like we're told to store up treasure, not on earth where rust and, and sorties can come and steal the stuff, but where we, can, where we can have a stored up inheritance that is safe, where rust and corruption are not going to touch it. That's what Jesus promises to those who are born again, and our children of God. Now, you've got to pick up here, people, before Peter starts getting into some of the stuff that he wants to talk about, he's laying this foundation. So forgive me if I labor it as he has done. It all hinges on a father-child relationship with God. It all hinges on the born again. It all hinges on the living hope because of the resurrection of Jesus. We got to get that before we go any further. There is more in this sentence, this rather long sentence. We'll pick up on that tomorrow. But just suffice it to say, take a moment. And if you can, in your wildest dreams or your wildest imagination, get a picture of the inheritance in heaven. Get a picture of the place where you will be with God and your loved ones. And I don't care how wild your imaginations are. We all we know is it's going to be better than anything you can dream or you could imagine. It's going to be better than that. And so as we live this life in the knowledge of the life that is still to come and the importance of storing up treasure up there, 
this is part of the devotional aspect of what 1 Peter is all about. So evaluate your life again today. Have a look at, are you doing things that have eternal value? Or are you just doing things that have secular or, or value down here on earth? Because that would be a waste at the end of time. It's wonderful that the things that you do down here to do for secular reasons, you can do the same things but for a different reason, you know that? If you raised children and went to jobs and did your work and made money the way that you do already, but you did it for the cause of Christ and not for the cause of your own pride, existence or ego, it would be this doing the same thing with a different result in a different place. But man, wouldn't it be the same? Wouldn't it be amazing? So you can do all the things you're already doing. Just change why you're doing them. Do them for the glory of God and for the inheritance people that is being laid up in heaven for you that God will give you on that day. Paul, 1 Timothy, clinches it where he says, I wait for that day. I'm ready to go. I'm all poured out. I'm ready to go to receive the crown that God has for me, but not only for me, but to all those who look forward to his appearing. Man, that's good stuff. Let's hold on to those foundational truths before we move into the rest of stuff. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.